One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 is a fantastic Warriors-like game and one that I believe if you're a fan of the genre, you should try out. I genuinely enjoyed my time with this game and I'm glad I chose Pirate Warriors 4 over number 3 because the timing to get the Platinum felt just about right, all things considered. Before we get into the video, if you enjoy the content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, as it really does help me out. And also, a huge thank you to the current members of the Bomb Squad. It is hugely and massively appreciated. So, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 has a total of 40 trophies, 23 bronzes, 13 silvers and 3 golds, and that all-important and beautiful platinum trophy. Because Pirate Warriors 4 pretty much follows the exact same story arcs as One Piece Odyssey, which is already on the channel, we're going to semi-ignore story details unless it's relevant to the trophy itself. So, let's get into it. The game starts off with us in control of Luffy, in a tutorial style battle, taking on a whole host of enemies. And for using our first skill, we get the trophy, I'm getting fired up. Shortly after that, we then manage to defeat our 1000th enemy, which nets us the trophy, 1 in a thousand. We then come face to face with Big Mom, and we have to take down her armour before we can then begin to really deal some damage to her. We then used our 10th skill in a single battle to get the trophy, certifiably powerful enemy. Koyidi, I know I'm saying that name wrong, shows up and slaps Big Mom off into the distance, and we then have to take on him instead. Luffy then experiences full force burst for the first time, and we get the trophy, willing to die for the cause. Before then changing form and defeating an enemy for the first time, for the trophy, Gear 4. After chipping away at Koyidi's health, we reach a point where a cutscene plays and Koyidi sends Luffy flying away similarly to what he did to Big Mom. This is the end of the tutorial level and we get two trophies, two of the four emperors stand in the way for completing the level and Heedless Rush for completing the level with a power type character. So the main story is split into six arcs, and the first arc follows Luffy and the Straw Hats in Alabastra, where they help Vivi calm the storm caused by Crocodile. Each arc then has a number of missions or battles that progress the story as we go. In between missions there is an upgrade screen where we can increase the attack, defence, health and endurance of the characters on top of being able to learn new skills. We acquire one or more skills here and get the trophy Fantastic Hardship. We then get to play a mission as Sanji. We visit the iconic location of Raindance and it was at the end of this mission where I earned my next two trophies. First was for getting my first S rank and the second was for completing a mission as a speed type character. The trophies, Supernova, and lightning speed. We fight through a few more missions including where Bon Clay and Sanji fight and also where Robin is working alongside Crocodile before gearing up for the final mission from the Alabaster Arc where we upgrade one of our skills to level 3 and get the trophy Push On Through. Then, while playing as Luffy, we take on Crocodile, where we have to use the pillars that are leaking water to our advantage. For giving him a pasting, watching an awesome cutscene and finishing the Alabaster arc, we then get the trophy, 
my friend's seal. We then watch a long cutscene which tells us the outcome of everything that came after the Alabaster arc concluded, and then it fills in the blanks right up until the start of the Ennis Lobby arc. Did I pronounce that right? This arc sees the end of the Going Merry, and the beginning of the Thousand Sunny, and is all taken place around Water 7 and the Tower of Law. We experience some Straw Hat fallouts, and also meet a new superhero from a land far away. We meet Iceberg, recruit Frankie and take a trip on the sea train as well as fighting Lucy, Bluno, Kaku and Jabba amongst a few others. And yes, I am aware that I just butchered a few of those names and I'm sure that I'm going to butcher some of the later ones even worse. One of the first missions in the arc forces us to play as Usopp as he chases down Frankie's men because Usopp is a technique type character and this was the first time playing as him, we got the trophy, Sophistication. We then complete a couple more missions in the arc and after each mission we get ourselves a bunch of XP, some berries and some medals. With these medals we can use them to upgrade some stats further. We had gathered enough so that we had unlocked 25% of the gallery and for this we got the trophy, a great and priceless treasure. After a short trip on Mr Iceberg's sea train we meet up with the Sniper King and this guy seems pretty cool, let's hope he joins the party at some point. We head to Judical Island and reach the Terror of Law where Robin is working alongside the government, kind of against her will. We head into our next mission and manage to stay airborne while fighting for over 10 seconds, which gets us the trophy, Airwalk. At the end of that specific mission, we come face to face with Bluno, or is it Blueno? whatever his name is. After Luffy powers up into gear 2, we wipe the floor with him and find ourselves at the foot of the Terror of Law, where Robin is telling us to leave before Luffy and the Straw Hat's charm is just too much to take and Robin powerfully requests to be saved. As we gear up, ready to make the save, we max out Luffy's growth level and get the trophy, Pirate Ranking. Then inside the Tower of Law, we have to collect a couple of keys by battering Kaku and Jabba, and then using those keys in order to make our way forward towards where Robin is being held. While dashing around the level, we break our 1000th destructible for the trophy, the King of Destruction. We then fight Luchi, but this motherfucker is just far too strong for Luffy. While he's lying on the ground, badly injured, Usopp calls out to Luffy, telling him to get up, fight and win, so they can all go home together. Luffy powers up once again and destroys Luchi before the bombardment from the marine starts raining down. Robin is saved and the Straw Hats all board the Merry, who unbeknown to me up until this point, had a mind of its own. We then see a cutscene where Merry accepts that it can't continue and Luffy sets it alight and we bury it at sea. For the last mission of the arc, we have to rob Frankie's pants to get him to join the team and also fight Garp, Luffy's grandfather who is also one of the leading officials of the marines. Luffy and the rest of the crew escape on our brand new spanking ship, the Thousand Sunny. For completing the arc, we get the trophy, Declaration of War.
And then for unlocking our 10th different character that we can use in free play, we get the trophy, I want 10 people. Next up was the Summit War arc. News of Luffy defeating a Celestial Dragon at some point in between arcs has reached all of the supernovas stationed at Sabodi Archipelago. Yep, completely butchered that one. And they're starting to get worried about being captured by the Marines, but desperately want to see Luffy. The first mission we play as Kid and have to defeat a bunch of Marines before battering Kuma. The next mission, we are back in control of Luffy and we have to work alongside Law and Kid as we continuously fight off Marines. Kuma keeps popping up all around the map, blocking the retreat of the Straw Hats, before Kizaru shows up. We give him a beating, but then he teleports into a position and readies himself to execute Zoro, before Rayleigh comes out of nowhere to make the save, which helps us make our escape. As all of the Straw Hats are running towards safety, Kuma shows up once again and with a swift bat of the hand teleports every crew member away, Luffy included. At the end of that mission, we got a few ca new character levels to max, which netted us the trophy, Friends. And then with all the spoils from the mission popping up, we collected our 50th type of coin for the trophy, Bounty Hunter. After the slap from Kuma, we find ourselves on the island of Amazon Lily, which is ruled over by Hancock. Luffy turns on the charm and rizzes Hancock up, who falls head over heels for him. We learn that Ace has been captured and is due to be executed at the Marine HQ in New Marineford. In the next mission, we have the option to play as Crocodile, who is working alongside us for this arc at least. As Crocodile is classed as a Sky character, we pick him up and begin our fight against the Marines, Smoker and Tagashi again. We also fight a Koji, briefly before he kicks Luffy so hard he falls unconscious. And for completing that level with a Sky character for the first time, we get the trophy, Harsh Winds and Strong Waves. While gearing up for the next mission, which is to save Ace, we upgraded a ton more abilities and unlocked more skills, and for acquiring our 20th skill, we earned the trophy Azura's Path. And then for completing all the islands from the beginner growth map, we got the trophy One Step Towards the Dream. Once in the mission, we again have to fight through a shit ton of enemies and also have to take out Pacifist a multiple times. While dashing around the map as we have been on every single mission, we dash for the 1000th time and get the trophy Cola Energy. We fight a hell of a lot more before finally reaching Ace, and then we have to deal with Sengoku, Akainu, and Aikiji. I completely messed that name up, but over the next few moments of the game before something huge happens, which I won't mention due to spoilers. The last mission of the arc sees us playing as Jinbei, who needs to create a space for Luffy to safely be extracted from the area. Teach, aka Blackbeard, shows up and for another spoiler reason, gains some immense power, yet still loses. There is a couple of other little bits that happen, but the mission ends and so does the arc, netting us the trophy, the times are changing. We are then into the New World arc, which takes place two years later, where Luffy and the Straw Hats finally reunite. We don't earn any trophies here, but we do get to experience Dressrosa and Dolphlamingo's dastardly behaviour. We also get to meet fan favourites Sabo and the oh-so-lovely Rebecca, with her huge blaring, um, heart. We compete in the Colosseum 
play as Sabo for a mission and help Rebecca and her toy soldier issue. That sounds kind of bad. Get your head out of the gutter. We fight Pika, who I'm still not entirely sure who or what this guy is, before Dolphlamingo activates Birdcage, which is slowly closing in on Dressrosa. Luffy, of course, does defeat Dolphlamingo. The last task of the arc is to fight Fujiro, where we get battered and sent flying. This is getting a little somewhat familiar, like Team Rocket blasting off again. But for completing the arc, we get the trophy, Followers, Saki, Cups. The next arc is Whole Cake Island arc, where we find Sanji, who is set to marry Penny, Big Mom's daughter, for political reasons. And we fight Bruley, who can shapeshift into different members of the Straw Hats. We then play as Sanji, who fights against his brothers, and then blackmailing him with the life of somebody dear, so he decides to keep his head down and play ball. Luffy eventually catches up to Sanji, and despite Sanji fighting him off and telling him to leave him alone, Luffy, in his ways, decides to wait until Sanji returns. While waiting, Luffy and Nami end up getting captured, and Jinbei is the guy that we control in the next section in order to break them back out. We see a cutscene where the reason for the wedding is made clear to Sanji, and he decides to join back up with the Straw Hats. With that mission complete, thanks to the spoils, we had unlocked 75% of the gallery, and got the trophy, the Tree of Knowledge. The crew then work out a plan of how to get Sanji out of his tricky predicament, and let's just say it's Sanji's incredible love for women that saves him in the end, and after a fair few frights and moments of madness, we eventually begin to retreat. As we escape and complete the mission, we unlock our 30th character, which unlocks the trophy, Grand Fleet. The final mission in the arc is a 1v1, Luffy versus Katakuri, who seems like such an awesome character by the way. Of course, in true One Piece fashion, Luffy gears up to gear 4 for the win and we complete the arc, and we get the trophy, onward to Wano. Now the final arc isn't based on the anime, it's completely original to the game and is centred around the land of Wano, where we see a lot of enemies becoming allies and fight a lot of the warlords, with Kaidi being the end game. During the first mission, we finally defeated our 10,000th enemy for the trophy, the power to destroy the world. During the remaining missions, it's just a lot of fighting and story spoiler things happening right up until we eventually take on Big Mom and then Kaidi. Remember the tutorial level at the start of the game? Yeah, this is that level, but this time it's for real. We complete the fight, Kaido just walks off, barely scratched, and complete the arc, which nets us the trophy, A New Dawn. With all of the story arcs completed, we then have to take on the treasure log missions. This is like the free play area, but some of the missions are completely new experiences from the story. There are a total of three different treasure logs and each one has a number of key battles, which will then unlock the decisive battle in order to complete that specific log. While gearing up ahead of the first mission of the treasure logs, we unlocked all of Luffy's second growth map, which meant I'd maxed out all of his special moves and netted me the trophy, a king's qualities. We then complete the first random mission from the treasure log, which gives me the trophy, Adventures at Daybreak. And then unlocked more random battles rinse and repeat until we completed the decisive battle from the first section of the treasure log, 
and unlocked the next set of levels, which netted me the trophy Level GL. We again complete a number of battles before then taking on the decisive battle for the second set of treasure log levels and again for the third set of treasure log levels. During the final decisive mission, which may I add, was by far the hardest part of the whole game, we defeated our 100,000th enemy for the trophy, the strongest creature. Before finishing the level and finishing the third and final treasure log set, which netted us the trophy, the name of the sea is. I then did the most common bomb chop thing to do and forgot to record the next trophy, which was for getting 20 characters crew level to max level. The trophy, family. And then for the final trophy needed for the platinum trophy, it was to gain 100 million berries. Berries being currency in game. You don't have to have all 100 million at one point, just earn that much throughout. And at this point, I think I had about 300,000. So for roughly four hours, I ran the exact same level until eventually got up to that magic number and I got the trophy, Rich Pirates. And then of course, that beautiful platinum trophy. Whoop whoop. So my time with One Piece Pirate Warriors was over. And for the second time, I'd completely enjoyed, bar that last trophy, my whole time within the world of One Piece, leaving me with the questions, should I watch the anime? And should I play another One Piece game? Let me know down in the comments. Feel free to correct any pronunciations or story parts that I may have gotten wrong while trying not to spoil too much. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe.